Maybe you already heard about the civilization inside our planet, also known as Argatha. Some of you already have an idea what is Argatha and what is all about. My question is what informations did you know about it? This is the story of exploration of Admiral Bird inside the planet Earth or inner world. There are stories or hearsay that our planet Earth is a hollow. Just like a ball with inner and outer layer and open space at the center. Let's talk about hollow Earth aka Argatha. I don't know what did you know about Argatha and what are the details you read from your source, maybe you already hear or watch it. Do you like reading or watching videos about aliens, UFO, reincarnation or alien technology? Are you interested in mysteries like Bermuda Triangle, Argatha, and Black Hole? Some knowledge is that our current science can't explain but you want to know more about it. Then I am inviting you to subscribe to my channel and you may also click the notification bell so you will get notified for my future video uploads from the knowledge from beyond. The Antarctic continent is almost same size of Europe, the immense height of icy cliffs kept this continent inaccessible. The war that happened between extraterrestrial, America and Germany are the great lesson to us that we are too far in terms of technology and knowledge. Extraterrestrial warns the government not to attack their base in Antarctic, and we are not allowed to carry any kinds of weapons on the said continent. The 1947 Antarctic Expedition it was all started in the year 1947 mission called, Operation High Jump, led by one of the highest rank, Admiral Byrd. But prior this operation, the German was the first to attempt to explore the continent. Admiral Byrd naval fleet composes of 12 warships, one submarine, 25 helicopters and planes and almost 5,000 crews. The following video clip are from the file of Russian military. The departure for the exploration of Antarctica was initiated, was their commander-in-chief Admiral Byrd. It was referred to as exploratory expedition, high jump, and even in bad weather, Admiral Byrd began a secret mission. Admiral Byrd directly reporting to the White House, the convoy continued steady course to the south. The announcement of the departure from New York according to Byrd, was a simple photographic survey expedition and resources of the unknown continent. The main interest was to do a full reconnaissance of the area, checking for possible signs of secret facilities in the region as many reports received from various sources. Admiral Byrd receives logistical support in Argentina, at the port of Mar del Plata where they were sent to units damaged and was made the care of the staff. There was a rumor that the Fuhrer and his staff could be in a secret base in the region. An operation called Valkyria of the German Navy had been seen numerous times in the region. One of the orders of the command, was to be traced, and possibly located the base in Antarctica where it is supposed the German were developing saucer projects, according to design captured in laboratories in Germany. They began to follow in the footsteps of Operation Valkyria, to try to find traces to the investigation. Following reports archived in Argentina, the Admiral went on to Antarctica, ready to face resistance if at all. The American fleet arrives off the coast of Antarctica and Admiral Byrd decides to personally participate in the operations. The aircraft then began a major operation for recognition in all directions from that point on the coast. Then came the confrontation that would destroy the convoy. Suddenly they spotted a strange disc-shaped aircraft flying low over the ships and submarines, and decided to drop the ship. Many discs appeared out of water into the air at great speed, and the shots began to hit back with bundles of a type of high energy. Little airplanes and gun could do, and do not drop any of those devices. Lost several ships and nearly all fighter planes. The Admiral was on a mission of reconnaissance flight during the attack. And only returned several hours after the attack is finished. They believe the case of Victor Schauberger designs and Germans who were coming from a secret base. They thought the Germans had created anti-gravity devices and preparing a way to fight back. The Viral disc design seized, and Hanabu 3 and IV left the military intelligence frightened and intrigued. Flight test and photos of the pilots, seized with the project, claimed to be able to reach the stratosphere. A large mothership dubbed, Andromeda, was also meticulously designed. The Admiral gave explanation in the White House saying it would be impossible a reaction to this attack because the weapons found were extremely superior to anything that could be imagined. 
During the reconnaissance flight, where the admiral was absent, it seems that he was contacted by the real owners of the flying saucers. In the western version of the facts, Admiral Byrd was lost during a flight and contacted by another race. Were not the Germans, was an alien race who inhabited large installations under the surface of Antarctica. Admiral Byrd was missing for three hours. What happened during that flight? Let's read Admiral Byrd's diary. 9.15 hours. In the distance is what appears to be mountain. 10 o'clock hours. We are crossing over the small mountain range and still proceeding. Beyond the mountain range is what appears to be a valley with a small river or stream running through the center portion. There should be no green valley below. 10.30 hours. Encountering more rolling green hills now. The external temperature indicator reads 74 degree Fahrenheit. The port side are green forests growing on the mountain slopes. Our navigation instrument still spinning, the gyroscope oscillating back and forth. The light here seems different. 11.30 hours. Countryside below is more level and normal. Ahead we spot what seems to be a city. This is impossible. My god. Off our port and starboard wings are strange type of aircraft. They are closing rapidly alongside. They are disc-shaped and have a radiant quality to them. 11.35 hours. Our radio crackles and a voice comes through in English with what perhaps is a slight accent. Welcome, Admiral to our domain. We shall land you in exactly seven minutes. Relax, Admiral, you are in good hands. I tug at the controls again, they will not respond. We are caught in an invisible vice grip of some type. The plane rudders slightly, and begins a descent as though caught in some great unseen elevator. 11.45 hours. After landing, Admiral and Radio Man were taken to city by tall blonde men. The city seems to be made of crystal material, one of my host speaks. I have no fear, Admiral you are to have an audience with the master. I stepped inside. I see a man with delicate features and with the etching of years upon his face. He is seated at a long table. He started speaking. I bid you welcome to our domain, Admiral. We have let you enter here because you are a noble character and well known on the surface world, Admiral. Surface world, I half gasp under my breath. Yes, the master replies with a smile. You are in the domain of the Ariani, the inner world of the earth. We shall not long delay your mission, and you will be safely escorted back to the surface and for a distance beyond. But now, Admiral, I shall tell you why you have been summoned here. Our interest rightly begins just after your race exploded the first atomic bombs over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. It was at the alarming time we sent our flying machines to your surface world to investigate what your race had done. That is, of course, past history now, my dear Admiral, but I must continue on. You see, we have never interfered before in your race's war and barbarity, but now we must, for you have learned to tamper with a certain power that is not for a man, namely, that of atomic energy. Our emissaries have already delivered messages to the powers of your world, and yet they do not heed. Now have been chosen to be witness here that our world does exist. You see, culture and science is many thousands of years beyond your race. Your race has now reached the point of no return, for there are those among you who would destroy your own very world rather than relinquish their power as they know it. I nodded, and the master continued, in 1945 and afterward, we tried to contact your race, but our efforts were met with hostility. Our flying machines were fired upon. Yes, even pursued with a malice and animosity by your fighter planes. Your recent war was only a prelude of what is yet to come for your race. We here see it more clarity with each hour. Do you say I am mistaken? No, I answer, it happened once before, the dark ages came and they lasted for more than 500 years. Some of your race live through the storm, beyond that, I cannot say. We see a great distance a new world stirring from the ruins of your race, seeking its lost and legendary treasures, and they will be here, my son safe in our keeping. When that time arrives, we shall came forward again to help revive your culture and your race. You, my son, are to return to the surface world with this message. And then Admiral Byrd and his radio man were returned to their plane. After the cargo door has closed the aircraft immediately lifted by the unseen force until we reached altitude of 2,700 feet. 220 hours. We are again over vast areas of ice and snow, approximately 27 minutes from the base camp. We radio them, they respond. We report all conditions normal. Base camp expresses relief at our re-established contact. 3 o'clock hours. We land smoothly at base camp. I have mission. End of Admiral Byrd's diary.
However, the story with disc-shaped machines did not end upon Bird's return to base. The 26th of February 1947 the disc-shaped aircraft attacked the expedition. Destroyer, Murdoch, a half of deck aircrafts, 68 sailors and officers were lost. Member of Expedition and Experience Air Force pilot John Sayerson, remembers, they, flying saucers, were jumping out of water like crazy and flew between masts of the warships at such speed, that streams of indignant air tore radio antennas. They silently rushed between the ships and were continuously spitting terrible fire. I was on a deck of Casablanca at that time. I could not understand anything. These objects did not produce a sound. Some Corsairs, fighters, had time to take off from Casablanca could not blink an eye as two of them have buried in water near the ships. They were stuck by unknown beams scattered from forward parts of these flying saucers. Suddenly, destroyer, Murdoch, located then cables from us has caught a bright flame of fire and began sinking. From other ship, despite of danger, lifeboats and motorboats have been sent to a place of accident. All nightmare continued for about 20 minutes. When flying saucers again dived into water. We started counting our losses, they were horrible. After UFO attack, the expedition escapes Antarctica shores in hurry, leaving gear and ammunition behind. The central group of Operation High Jump were evacuated by the Burden Island Ice Breaker from the Bay of Wales on 22 February 1947. Those information are from Admiral Byrd's diary and file of the Russian military. Now, let's move forward to my trusted source that knows almost everything. This explains about the rumors of Argatha also known as Inner Earth or Hollow Earth. There were very old underground bases in South America, Asia, Europe, but now some are purposefully flooded with water. The Antarctic base sits on a large fault line that forms a large underground area, 200 by 12 miles equals 2,400 square miles. A large base exists there with plenty of infrastructure, and its entrance is covered by a curtain of steam, preventing it from being displayed. There are also some submarine bases of research that harbor spaceships and hundreds of researchers, but that civilization inside the Earth does not exist. The Earth is not hollow. There are two submarine stations in deep waters that are home to many transport ships. There is a station in Antarctic with a complete infrastructure to maintain an intergalactic base of research and support, including a warehouse where many ships from different planets have a safe haven and supplies during their stay on Earth. Many ships with problems from storm damage did not fall into the hands of Earthlings because they were rescued by teams from the Antarctic base. The Antarctic base was serious about the ultimatum to thwart any attempts, and the attackers would have to live with the consequences. Even reluctantly, they counter-attacked the squad and caused them to pull out completely damaged, as an example for all other governments. There were never any problems since. The Antarctic was declared an area of research, and no armed vessel has ever sailed back there. The countries that have established bases in Antarctic are there to guarantee your fair share, when there is a division of the continent. In fact, this was done because the U.S. government did not pass the information on the alien base in Antarctic to others, simply created rules for the research bases were installed in the coast. The Antarctic base did not bother with it, because they do not disrupt operations. On the new mineral, it is not included in your periodic table. It is mineral with zero resistance at room temperature. Widely used in our old ships before. The advent of unipolar magnetoplasma, which uses only atoms specially programmed to twist the magnetic field generated. But with this mineral, you can build spaceships perfect for intergalactic travel. Let's go to my own conclusions about this matter. Logically speaking, you think is this possible? Is it applicable in reality? If you say yes, my follow-up question. Is it possible scientifically? Now, let's use our imagination, according to the theory there is, inner sun. My question is what is the characteristics or properties of this inner sun? We know that sun or planet has its gravity, if it has gravity, then how this gravity works? Does it like a normal gravity that pulls everything, or just like a magnet that repel everything? If this gravity pulls everything, then how come the center became hollow? And if this gravity act like a magnet that repels everything, then how our planet formed? Since the Earth is formed, let's move to deeper analysis. If there is inner sun beneath us, how the inner sun floats at the center? 
If it has gravity that pulls, it cannot float at the center it will be pulled itself to inner crust. If the gravity repels everything then the scout plane used by Admiral Byrd will crash. Why? Because our aerial vehicle designed to counter the gravity from pulling down. Did you get my point? Hoping that you get some idea about this legendary story. Yes, it really happened, but, he do not understand what was happened to him. Haven't you realized that he does not mention anything about the appearance of an alien he met? When we say alien, the figure that we know is the gray alien. You didn't know that maybe you already encounter one of them, without realizing that he or she is from outside our planet. Just to give you idea, some of them look like us, just like the Pleiades, and some of having an angelic looks, like the Krulians, according to my source they are much more beautiful than earthlings. In my next video I will give you some information about alien races, what are they doing here and some of their technology how it works. See you soon on my next video.